Hello, this is Sim Racing Corner, and this is a PlayStation VR headset running a VR racing game on my gaming PC. So, how is this possible? Well, it's actually quite easy using a third party piece of software called Ivory. I will run through a setup later in the video, but first I wanted to give you my impressions of this experience so you have an idea if it's worth your attention. So my demonstration is with a racing game, but this setup is equally viable for any sit-down Steam VR game that doesn't use VR hand controllers. Although that's not impossible to set up, um, it does seem a bit pointless to me to get hand controllers working. Um, it just looks like a lot of hassle, in which case you're just better off buying a PC VR headset for you know room scale gaming. So indeed, I wouldn't recommend you buy a PS VR headset just to run on your PC. But if you already own a PlayStation and have a VR headset to go with it, then sure, give this a go. It's a bit of fun and potentially this setup might be all you want for a bit of PC VR gaming, particularly if it's just dedicated to driving games. I have to say, this isn't bad at all. The headset is comfortable, the picture motion is smooth, the image sharpness is as good as you can expect from the dual 960 by 1080 screens in this headset. Automobilista 2 remains very playable. That's what counts. I had a pretty good time here. One thing to bear in mind, the head tracking is limited to 3 degrees of freedom, which means your position is physically stuck in one place, which for driving games I think is perfectly adequate. Considering it is using an accelerometer like in a mobile phone for tracking, it remained accurate and kept up with my movements and never needed resetting. Good stuff. Well, this turned out to be a lot better than I expected, I must admit, and setting it up is quite easy too. So let's move on to that and I'll show you. On the table is everything you need to set it up to your PC. And the good news is there's no extra hardware you need. This is all the stuff you've already get with your PlayStation VR headsets. So the headset, the processor unit, power supply, a uh, HDMI cable. There's a USB cable here somewhere in this tangle, there it is, and, and there you go. So let's put this together. It's really, really simple stuff, guys. Pretty much how you set it up with your PlayStation console anyway. So first off, we can plug these into the processor unit from the headset. Easy. On this side, the HDMI cable goes into the HDMI PlayStation 4 one on there. So, okay, so this side will go into your graphics card, an HDMI out on your graphics card. Okay, so remember that, so that's for that. Simple enough. USB cable. Pops into there. So I can get it the right way around. And that goes into a USB port on your PC. Easy stuff, guys. And then finally, you power it on. So there you go guys, that's it. So the only things that go into your PC, USB and HDMI, and then you just need to power it off. Simple as that guys, really, really is easy. Then just plug it into your PC. When you turn it on, your PC will recognize um, this as an extra monitor, in fact. And what will happen is it'll power on, and on your screen here, you actually see the desktop of an, like an extended screen, like an extra monitor on your PC, then you know you're set up. So after we've done that, you can then move on to installing the software. The first thing you need to do is install the Steam VR software. If you already have a VR headset on your PC, then you don't need to worry about this step. But for everyone else, type in Steam VR into the search. And you can install it here. Of course, I already have it installed. Next, we want to install the Ivory software. So type in IVRY. And here we go. It is, of course, installed already. Uh, but you download it here. It is free to install the, the main software. And then you pick up the DLC, which is here. But there is a free 
light version which does allow you to use the software completely free for about 10 minutes before the screen darkens so you can test it see if you're happy with it before you commit to buying the premium version with your playstation vr headset all plugged in and powered on you are now ready to launch the iv driver software so it will launch Steam VR for you. It'll set everything up so you don't need to do anything um, from here. And it should all just work out of the box. Um, what, you'll ha what will happen is the IV software will appear in your taskbar. So you will want to do double click that to open it up. As we have here. And you can see the Steam VR software is working and is a... Uh, is uh, yeah, just jiggle the headset to make it wake up. Uh, but you can see here, uh, we have my settings here, which um, I was happy with. So we go for it. The first thing you want to do, though, is recalibrate the headset. Because what you should find is, uh, you may see that if you look through the lenses, the SteamVR software is swimming around. And all you need to do is go to recalibrate and just follow this instruction, which is basically leave it on a flat surface and calibrate, and it will sort your headset out. Once you're done, you should then just go back to uh, the main screen um, and you should be fine. So uh, under the performance settings, you can set the frame rate. I have it set at 90, you can have it also at uh, 120 or 60, but I think 90 is absolutely fine. Just test it for yourself and it will depend on the performance of your PC. If we go to headset, Okay, so here you just leave the lens distortion checked as otherwise you'll get that bow distortion problem. So it does sort it out by having that box checked. Um, the IPD adjustment setting, just set this according to what your uh, distance between your pupils are. Uh, next we go to tracking. So here it'll be set at default, which is absolutely fine. So you don't need to do anything here, just leave everything um, as it is and under Steam VR. So you have different driver modes. So it will start off at virtual. Um, I find that extended or VR direct are the ones to try. Um, I found using the virtual one. I'm not sure what the massive, the, the whole difference is. It is explained by the developer, um, but it it's really doesn't really matter too much as long as it works for you. So extended and VR direct are the ones uh, you should try out. Virtual you'll find maybe the screen will jitter a little bit when you're moving your head around. So pick that. Uh, rendered resolution, so that is the default. You can increase it if you want to have, um, if you want to super sample the image, but that will depend on the quality of your hardware, whether or not you can, it can cope with uh, super sampling the image. But I'm just gonna run it at 1920 by 1080, which is the native resolution of the headset. Um, you don't need to do anything in Steam VR because if you go to Steam VR, you can see there's some settings there, and you can see it has resolution per eye and all this sort of stuff. Basically, ignore that. Don't worry about anything about the Steam VR settings. Everything you need will be in the IV settings here. Um, you have recenter, which will just basically recenter the view for you. But generally speaking, in a VR game, you can just bind a key to recenter the headset anyway, so you don't need to really worry about that. And um, there you go, guys. That is all you need to do. And next, all you need to do is find the game you want to run. So in my case, it will be Autumn Ballista 2. And if we play that, we launch in Steam VR mode. And away we go. And just like launching any PC VR title, the game will just appear through the headset. The only thing to do is bind the reset of view key to a key or button of your choice in the game settings. And from that point, it's just like any PC VR headset really. The Ivory software makes it really easy and you can try before you buy, which is also a nice feature. Um, yeah, a nice interesting test. The PS VR headset worked really well. I'm quite impressed actually. The setup was nice and straightforward. Nothing complex at all. I really expected it to be a bit more tricky, but it really wasn't. So, I have nothing more to show you here. Job done. I hope you found the video useful. Please drop your comments below the video. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy simming and bye-bye.